Dragon Slayer Media presents Rich Gaspari and John Romano in Fitness, Fame, and Fortune. So this podcast we're doing, John, you know, time to time, we're going to talk to our audience about certain things that I believe that are important for us to discuss, whether they're current, you know, events that are happening or certain tips that I believe in that have really helped me excel. Uh, So today's show, we're going to talk about uh, how powerful the mind is and that I believe that the mind is the most powerful muscle in your body, not your body. Uh, Even though I'm a bodybuilder for life, I believe that my brain and my train of thought and my thinking has been the most powerful muscle in my body. Absolutely. I think the mindset of a bodybuilder is one of the most powerful tools that he can use. I mean, Arnold was the master at, at you know, psyching people out and using his brain just as hard as he, he used his body to compete in bodybuilding. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, we came up with a bunch of tips. We got 11 tips here that I think will be really, really important for our audience to listen to and see how that it can help them, you know, further their lives. Absolutely. So let's go into the first one. Uh, tip number one, include a structured training regimen into your life. John, I believe that my training and, and my training five days a week have helped me tremendously. Uh, you know, having a, a structured training program, of course, right now in the pandemic, it's bum- become very difficult. So I have a set of dumbbells, a barbell. I'm still able to train every day. And What I like to do, and I know you and I are not on the same page when it comes to when to train. We do believe in training every day, but I've felt that training really early before the day starts, when everyone is still sleeping, when it's still basically dark and the sun is just coming up around 5 a.m. is the best time for me because then that's when my mind is totally clear of all the garbage. I definitely believe that a sound body makes a sound mind and this is something I believed in my whole life. I will train for the rest of my life because I believe that it definitely helps my psyche, my mentality, and the stronger my body is, the stronger my mind is. Yeah, I believe in all of that too. It's just the hour that you do it is what irks me. <laughs> <laughs> I am not I am not a morning person. Those days are over. I, I used to. I used to. In fact, I'll even go on record as saying I, I realized some of my best gains ever in my the later part of my lifting career when I trained it with my wife at like five o'clock in the morning. So I don't know if it was I was it was new in our relationship and I was just trying to show <laughs> off for her, but or whatever. But no, it, it definitely made a difference. But I think I think for all phrases, I think for all training, for all people, we go through phases, you know, and in, in when we feel the best about training. And right now, I think you are, but you were always kind of a morning guy, weren't you? I, I've always trained in the morning, you know, training for the Olympia, not not super early, because here's the thing: I always believed that I had to have this breakfast and a meal to eat before I train, and I just ended up because of this pandemic. I said, you know what? I'm going to get up really early. Uh, I just want to go and I want to just get a workout out. And I did it on an empty stomach. And I thought I thought at first that I wasn't going to get a good workout because I'm not going to have the glycogen. I'm going to be tired. I won't be able to get a pump. But you know what, John? I started doing this early morning workout. Now, of course, I've, I've trained early morning doing cardio, calling fasting cardio. So. I believe that you had to have like a meal in your body to be able to train in the morning because you want to have that pump, you know, because it's anaerobic and you want to have that glycogen pump. But I found out that I didn't have to have anything to eat. I do use my products and I'm not here to push my products, but I tell you, I use Glycofuse and I use Amino Last. That's the only thing I use up in the morning. I don't even use like high caffeine because I don't really need it. I get up super early. You know, I get up by 4.45. I'm wide awake. Um, I get myself set to go to the gym. You know, wipe my, you know, wash my face. Take my amino acids. Take my glycofuse, which are you know the, the carbohydrates that go directly into muscle, and I hit the gym. And I've been doing this now for the past 60 days. And I got to tell you, I'm getting leaner. I'm getting stronger. I, I'm getting great pumps. So for me, it really, really worked. Um, but I've always trained early. I've always believed in training early. I've trained twice a day. You know, competing, I would train in the morning, you know, doing double splits. But right now, at my age, getting one workout a day is good for me. 
Well, it's, it's the structure, really, that counts, Richie. It's the fact that you're structuring your day to every day train at the same time and get up and go and do it and, and, and knock it out. And for some people, that's, you know, like for you, that's five o'clock. For some people, that's going to be eight o'clock. For some people, that's going to be five at night. The important thing is, is that you sh- is what you're saying is that you structure that your day so that you are you are absolutely getting in your workouts. Definitely. You have to structure a time when you get to work out and you need to be not distracted. Yes. See, the reason why the reason why I'm training that early, John, is I have a tendency if I have my phone. I'm getting a text message from a customer or something that's going on at the office or something going on at the warehouse, I'll end up answering it. Yep. So by training 5 a.m., there's nobody up. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's better for me that I'm not disturbed and I want to be totally focused on my workout. That is my yoga or that's my meditation by going in the gym and focusing on training my body. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the second tip we want to give you here about is revolves around, as far as I'm concerned, my mother always used to tell me, my grandmother always used to tell me, idle hands are the devil's workshop. So here we are in lockdown. You've got you know all this time on your hands. What a perfect time to do something you were always trying to do but didn't have the time to do. Uh, I, I've noticed here in my neighborhood a lot of people are out working on their lawns and their backyards. And uh, the, my buddy that owns the pine straw place is selling all kinds of mulch and rocks and pine straw. The people are fixing up their yards. It's it, it, it's a good time to make a list of things that you've been, you know, putting off or that you wanted to haven't had time to do or say that, uh, you know, I'll get to that later, whether it's, you know, redecorating, painting a room, cleaning out the garage, sweeping a driveway, fixing the roof, whatever. It, this this is the time to get that done. Don't waste the, 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 the fact the fact that we've got this time shut down. A lot of people are angry about it and negative and they're and they're just kind of sitting there festering in their negativity. Whereas if you could turn this around and make it something positive, you've got this time on your hands now. You've got the ability and the wherewithal. The weather's nice. Go outside and make your house look nice. Well, I, you, you just made a point about, you know, writing it down and making a list, you know, and, and I did that during this pandemic. I wanted to change my office and I ended up, you know, redecorating and things I would never do. I just because I'm so busy. But, you know, I structured a time and I put it down on paper and I said, I'm going to do this task. Whether I do a little bit at a time, I'm going to do this task. And it's, you know, it's separate from working. It's something that I wanted to get done. You know, that's outside of what I'm doing in work. And, and, you know, I got it done. Well, these things are important to do, Richie, because that sense of accomplishment, when you step back and look at what you did, whether it's, you know, painting the room, fixing up the front of the house, whatever, when you step back, at that, especially if it was something that was on your list and it's something you've been wanting to do and it's been an eyesore until you've gotten it done. And then you st- wait, you do it and you step back and you look at it. That feeling of accomplishment it, it is, is a great feeling. Definitely. You get that feeling of accomplishment. And I think when you have that type of positiveness inside of you, it helps you overall. And this is why, you know, I believe in, in doing things to keep yourself positive constantly. And, and finishing a task is a positive accomplishment. Absolutely. So here's something silly, and I don't think it's silly, and it's something I really believe in, and it's, and it's something I've been doing since I was a little kid because my mother taught me this, and that's making my bed. The first <laughs> thing I do in the morning is I make sure I make my bed. And I don't make my bed sloppy. I make my bed very neat. You know, I make sure the sheets are pulled nice and neat. You know, the bedspread is done. The pillows are done because to me, it's something that starts your day. That it's, it's, it's a small accomplishment that sets your day so that other accomplishments can happen during the day, you know, as well because of that one small accomplishment of making your bed. Yeah, I, I do the same thing, but mine's because of leftover, you know, memories of boot camp when I was in the <laughs> Navy. But, but and, and you know, I, I remember them telling us, you know, at, at the very least, at the very least, no matter what happens in your day, when you come home, at least your bed is made. Exactly. It's like, and, you know, and, I, it's like walking into that hotel room for the first time, you know, when the bed's made, when it's got that nice new feeling, you know. Uh, it, it just feels incredible that, you know, you have that you have that done and your bed's nice and neat. Actually, a general 
a very accomplished general, uh, talks about that the most important, you know, task is to make your bed. So when I listened to that, I started laughing because I, you know, I got it from my mom. My mom is like, you got to make your bed. <laughs> and, um, you know, I didn't have, you know, I wasn't in boot camp. My mom was my boot camp. <laughs> so, uh, she Itali- was old- Italian moms are worse than boot <laughs> uh, camp. <laughs> she was like, she was like really, really, you know, she starts screaming, get up, make your bed. <laughs> Did she ever throw a shoe at you? Uh, she throws shoes at me, hit me with, you know, a rake or, you know, <laughs> or a broom, you know, today, if you hit your kids with anything, you're going to get, you know, you're going to go to jail. Yeah. They're going to call man. child services. Out. <laughs> when I was a kid and I, I just like my dad and my mom, you know, you know, rest in peace. Uh, they believed in, you know, disciplining their kids. Um, yeah. but with love, but you know, that accomplishment of making my bed or my mom tell me make my bed, Way after my mom is gone, I'm still hearing my mom say, make my bed. <laughs> and, you know, I have, my, I have my daughter, and I've taught her the same thing, to make her bed. And she's now 13 years old, and she started making her bed at 11, you know, because she used to just leave the bed. And I said, nope, you got to make your bed. Uh, I really taught her a lesson because she was late for school, and she left, and she didn't make her bed. I went into the room, and I said, your bed's not made. I'm late. <laughs> I go, I don't care. Make the bed. You know something, John? She always makes her bed. <laughs> <laughs> she never did that again. <laughs> so, oh. so that's that's our that's our lesson is, you know, the first thing you should do in a day and, you know, set your accomplishment is, you know, make your bed. Absolutely. And, and, and to further the list of accomplishments, you actually need the list. So it's, it's, it's the fourth tip we have for you is making lists lists. I, you, you, as well as I, as I do the same thing, we, you gotta have a list because we stuff comes at you from all directions, things you got to get done. Some are work related, some are family related, some are in somewhere in the middle and you know, you know, an, an appointment, something you got to do, something you got to pick up, something you got to fix, something you need. Don't forget at the store. All of these things are really important to, to make your, make your, attempt at whatever you're doing more efficient and 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 having the list kind of it's almost like don't you think it's like almost like an order like you're telling yourself to do something because it's on your list and then you got to get it done and then you know you get it done and then you feel good oh definitely you know as an entrepreneur you know i've I've, I've been always a self-starter and for me to get things done is i write a list and you know i look at i make that list the night before and then the next day i follow through now if i can't finish that total list, you know, I put a check mark on what I've got done. And then the next day I try to accomplish that, you know, that accomplishment that's on that list that has to be done. So yes, I believe writing down uh, things that need to be done on a list is very important in business matters. John, I have a million things going on. You know, as a CEO of a company, I am doing everything from warehousing, you know, production, marketing, all these different uh, things that are going on in my business. And I have to write them down to make sure these things are getting accomplished or I'm able to get the people that are working for me to get those things done. And it, it, it's another thing when you have all that list done and you do that check mark and you finally get them done. It's another good feeling that you, you got these accomplishments, uh, completed. Absolutely. For, for me, it's cause I'm, I'm like, I'm a creative guy. I'm always thinking about, you know, marketing strategy, what I'm going to write about, you know, the idea, how I'm going to get this point across. And sometimes you, I get way out there, you know, in, in, in my thought process and I lose track of time. I lose track of what I'm doing. I get forgetful of things that, you know, plus as we get older, we're also becoming more forgetful. So that compounds it. And having the list is just that kind of nudge that you need like, Hey, get, get this done. It's four o'clock. What are you doing? We, you, you, this isn't done yet. You got to go before they close or, you know, whatever. So I think from, as an entrepreneur, as someone who's a, you know, a creative minded person to someone who's just really busy to someone who's got a single parent, has got th- three kids climbing up your leg. It, it, it's really easy to get distracted and lose track of time, lose track of what you're supposed to do. And then you all you, having things left undone is the opposite of the feeling you get when you step back and you have accomplished something. And, and write that list openly. Yes. Write it in your, write it in your kitchen on a, on a, you know, on a whiteboard or write it somewhere that you could see that list. 
that you know you got to get them done because if you just put it in a book and put the book away, you're going to forget about the list. Good point. So you got to make sure that you see that list and that list is glaring in your face. <laughs> you know, it's good to put it on. You know where to, you know where you put it is where because of us, we eat constantly being body burgers, put it on your uh, refrigerator door. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the best place to put everything. Yes. It's, it's, I, I keep it right next to the picture where I'm, where I look really, really good. So, <laughs> That's a, that's a great thing to have. You, you always should have a picture of you in your best shape on the refrigerator. Because that way, when you're going in there, you might make a better choice. True, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> so tip number five, and, and this is something I very, I believe in, um, is stay positive. No matter the darkest of times, keeping a positive outlook will make you work on fixing the situation or coming up with a solution. If you think negative, you won't think of alternative actions to resolve or come up with something entirely different that can change the things for the better. And I've done this my whole life. I've always believed, and, and you know, we talked about this, John. We talked about looking at the glass half full instead of half empty. Right. And I've had a lot of, and, and having employees work for me, there's people that have worked for me. And they say, Rich, you know what? You're a dreamer. You always think positive. Even during, you know, something that's bad that's happening, you think positive. And I said, you know, I only want to think positively because if you think negatively, you will give up. Yes. And you you never want to give up. There is always alternatives. And things that happen to you that are that negatively impact your life, there's always a silver lining. And 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 to, to talk about something thinking positively. You know, even in tragic, in, even in tragedy, we talked about, um, we talked about yesterday, the show, John Walsh, John Walsh, horrible. His son got abducted and killed. Now that's a horrible thing to happen uh, to any parent. But what this guy did is he turned that horrible situation into something that he was able to make positive and he was able to help hundreds or not thousands of people that he, that he's helped catch, you know, and put in jail yeah. because of, of the one horrible thing that has happened to him, John Walsh. America's still, most wanted, right? Yes. America's most yep. wanted. And, and you look at that and you, you look at this guy, you know, that's where some people, they have this negativity saying the world sucks, you know, whatever, someone died or my wife left me and took all my money or whatever happened to them. And they just don't know how to look positively and look at ways to fix their life. Richie, some people thrive on the negativity. Oh, they, they, that, I've right? known so many people like that. I've known so many people that have been so negative. And, and you know what? That negative thinking has caused them to have a negative life. Yes. You, you, you know, they've, they failed that, you know, bad marriages. They were financially strapped. You know, they, they always said like, my only, you know, luck is bad luck. Yes. They don't look at they don't look at anything positive, and I, I stay away from those people. You know, you want to stay positive and you want to be influenced by positive people. I, I mean, that's part of like thinking positively is being around positive people as well. It's like poison. It, it's it's oh, like it's, it, it's toxic. It's when you were these and you, you ever notice it's much easier for people to get sucked into the negative vortex than it is the positive one. It, it, uh, it's, it seems easier to be able to gossip about people and talk bad about people and to criticize them and insult them and, you know, to all the good focus on all their bad points. It's it's not you, in those type of people never look at somebody and say, wow, they're they're great at this or they do this really well or they're a really good dad or they're a really good person or, like, you know, he's a great husband or, or any of those things. They 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 thrive on what's wrong and not and not with what's right and that, that just it just creates a circle of toxic negativity that'll just drag you right down the drain if you let it. You know, if you got nothing good to say, don't say it at all. You know, I, I always believed in that. Um, but the having the attitude of just being, you know, having a positive outlook in, in things that you're doing, wake up. You yep. know, loving life. You know, there's some people that are that are sick or have, you know, issues. They don't have a roof over their head. I mean, you got to think positive, just think positive. And if you think positive, 
I, you know, and I could say this to people, people like, you don't know what he's, you don't know what Richard don't know what he's friggin' saying. You know, I got so much bad shit happened in my life and, and I get it. And I've had some really big ups and downs, but I always believed that there were always, the sun will shine again. I, you know, even on a cloudy day, that sun will come out and you have to believe in that. Positive begets positive. Definitely. Yep. Number six on our list is th- th- has to do with making changes. If, if you're assessing what's going on in your life and you know that, you know, you're, you're up against some obstacle and you need to change it. The important thing to be able to understand is if you have the control or the ability to change that thing. Sometimes you don't. And the important thing, it's like in the alcoholics creed, you know, you got to know have the wisdom to know the difference, to change the things you can, to know, to ch- not to go with the things that you don't and, and the wisdom to know the difference. And it, it's important that you do are able to recognize that because you can do a lot of beating your head against the wall, trying to change something that you're never going to change. I mean, if you live in Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Bridge is where, is where it is. I know it might be more convenient for you if it was two blocks further north, but it's not moving. It's, that's the where it is. You're going to have to figure out a way to get around those extra two blocks and get over the bridge and make it to work on time. So you, you, you've got to be realistic in what's blocking you, what's stopping you, and you have to be able to recognize, is this something I have control over that I can change, or is this object immovable and i got to figure out a way around it? A good example is this pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. There, there, is, there is nothing we have control of in this pandemic. Right. There's nothing you and I can do about this pandemic. But what have we done since this pandemic has started? You know, we started this podcast. Yeah. You know, this is something positive that we've been able to do because you and I can do it during this time. Sure. But we couldn't. We, but we can't control what's going on and open up the stores and you know, make sure that we're able to do things um, like go to the gym right now or <laughs> a lot of things that we just can't do because it's this time and it's just something that's beyond our control. And it's allowed us to snag some really good guests we have lined up because they're sitting home doing nothing. Definitely. And, you know, so we've seen, you know, like I said, this has helped us in a lot of ways. You know, with this pandemic, because we made it into a positive. Even in business, we've pivoted our our, our focus. You know, to try to you know, you're, you've you've been very you've been really astute on assessing this and figuring out what people need and how to pivot the business towards coming out with. You know, you've come out with three new products since this thing has started. Four new products. Four. You know, I'm sorry. We have, we, four. We have, well, we have we we have three right now, and a fourth coming out this week. But yes, you know. The one thing that I couldn't change is all the stores are closed. Right. The gyms are closed. But this is what I focused on. We focused on our website. We focused on Amazon. We focused on sales to other websites. And we've actually grown our sales. We've been able to keep the doors open. We've been able to keep every employee still working at Gasparri Nutrition. So I'm really proud to say that, you know, even though there was things that were beyond my control, I was to be able to control the things that I could do to make the changes. Exactly. Exactly. Here's something that I definitely uh, believe in is be grateful, you know, in what you have. Yes. Um, Like the old song, you know, with Mick Jagger, you can't always get what you want. You get what you need. And that's in, and that's in in that's in life, you know, be grateful for what you have. Uh, Don't think of the negative things that you don't have. You know, you may want, you know, a better house, or you want, you may want a better job, or you may want to make more money, but be grateful that, you know, you're healthy. Be grateful that you have a loving relationship. Be grateful that you have beautiful kids. I mean, these are things you have to be grateful of. And if you're grateful of the things that you do have, then you can slowly pivot to figure out how to get yourself or better yourself so that you, you know, you're not where you're at. But if you just fester in the negativity of not being grateful of what you have, you're going to stay in that negativity. You're going to stay in that position. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's an important thing, especially now during this pandemic, be grateful. You're not sick. Be grateful. Yes. You're not dying. You know, be grateful. You're not on a ventilator because some 
people are. You know, how exactly how many might be a point of conjecture at this point, but the point is you're not sick. And 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 you have this time. You have this ability now, you know, it may be forced upon us, but like like you said, you know, in the last couple of uh, uh, points back, you know, m use this time. Make sure make sure that you're not wasting it and be grateful that you have it and be grateful that you're able bodied and able minded and can actually do something right now versus, uh, you know, some people right now who are just absolutely not as fortunate as you. John, I, you know. Before the pandemic, I traveled so much. I, I would do over 100,000 miles. I've been to, you know, 21 countries. I've been everywhere. And with all that traveling, it really prevents me from doing a lot of things to sit down and, you know, think of other alternatives that I can do in life and, you know, coming up with new products, you know, coming up with this podcast. There's so much to be able to do because of this situation. And, and I'm very happy for that. You know, people have to look at time and say, wow, I'm very grateful that I got to spend more time with my family, you know, that I normally can't do because I'm always busy or I'm always traveling. So, you know, like I said, be grateful in what you have. Exactly. You can't, I, can't, you, I can't stress that enough. It's really <laughs> important. The number eight on the list, uh, enjoy the process. And that's that's kind of like, you know, it's not always the destination that's important, although it is. But the journey is also. And I think a lot of times people look back on their lives and they think, oh, man, I wish I'd have paid more attention back then. And I, I remember training in Gold's Gym in the 90s when, when every great bodybuilder in the 90s was there training at one time. Paul Dillette, Chris Cormier, Flex Wheeler, they're all – Gary Stridham, they're all in the gym at the same time. Um, and, and it was just – Wow, looking back on that now, what an incredible situation that was. Unfortunately, at the time, I wasn't really cognizant of how incredible it would have been. It was going to be later on, you know, later on in life. But go, going through life, there's there's ups and downs, and there's there's ways of having to maneuver through those ups and downs without being manic about it. You know, in one minute, you know, you're on the top of the world and then the next minute you're hiding under the covers and, you know, afraid to come out of the house. The, the, the important thing is stay the course. You're, you're going somewhere, you're doing something, you're following a plan, you're able-bodied, you're able-minded, you know what you're doing, you're going to come up against obstacles. And when you do, it's not the obstacle that's important, it's how you get around it that is. And you got to pay attention to that and realize the process is part of the destination. Definitely. I, I definitely believe this. You know, training for many of my competitions, you know, when I was preparing for that show, it was a 12-week process of preparing for that show for that last day, you know, on that stage. And let me tell you something. That process, there were ups and downs. You know, certain weeks I felt I didn't look good and – you know, I was dieting or, you know, I was lowering my calories, doing my cardio and like day after day, my body wasn't changing. Um, and it was really frustrating or, you know, there'll be great changes and my body would start showing and, you know, I would pose and come up with a different pose. And, but it was, there was ups and downs getting ready for the show, but you know, I was always like focused on that day, that day, that day. So, you know, I have to say, like when I started competing, I was winning shows. And but when I won the show, it was really funny. It was that climax of being on stage and then winning. And then afterwards, it was just like this blah. Like all of a sudden it was like I, I got depressed. I realized I got depressed after a show, and I mean, oh, I gotta do the next show. And I started saying to myself, you know what? I gotta enjoy the process. The process of preparing the show. The process of the off season, the process of growing or improving a body part or or doing whatever I needed to do, you know, for the next show was was more of something I needed to enjoy. The same thing with business. You know, I was growing aspiring nutrition or I'm trying to have a goal of, you know, making it, you know, a million dollars. And the process of getting to make that million dollars is a lot more uh, appreciative and enjoying than when you get that million dollars. So you have to just, like I said, enjoy the process of whatever you're doing, whether you're going to school to finish to get your, you know, your diploma 
or whether you're getting ready for a bodybuilding show like myself or you're starting a startup business and where you want to be and all you're thinking about is the end result, just remember that process of the ups and downs and, you know, the, uh, the times when you felt like you were going to give up. All that you should take in and enjoy. The process made it richer. Yes. Yes. The next thing, number nine, you know, pay it forward. And what's really rewarding is when you're able to give instead of receive. And and that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to, like, give money. You know, you can donate your time. You can help somebody in the gym. You can, you know, set somebody up with a routine to get them to get in shape. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was competing in bodybuilding, you know, I've helped so many people get ready for shows and they were all like, you changed my life. You taught me how to diet. You taught me how to train. And it felt really good because I was able to change these people's lives. You know, later on in life, I gave to charities. You know, my dad died from prostate cancer. My mom died from Parkinson's. I was able to give to those charities um, because I felt it was something that I needed to do because, you know, I suffered you know, with my parents that had those debilitating diseases and I wanted to be able to help with that. So if you can pay it forward, that's something that you will feel so satisfied more than receiving. You never heard the thing is, you know, to, to give is better than to receive. You heard of that. It really is something. And and they've actually proven that there's some type of endorphins that you get when you give and you receive giving your time. Um, whether you're whatever political stance you are, whether you're left or right, and you know you feel that you want to give by giving public service, and that means running for office. Whether it's a small, you know, office like Congress, uh, not congressman, but um, councilman, or you know maybe a bigger accomplished like mayor, uh, or maybe even bigger like a congressman or whatever you want to be, you know. Go for those goals, but do do it because you believe in a purpose of why you're doing it because you're giving a service, not to become famous in being you know a politician. Do it because you really believe in helping. Those random acts of kindness are, are, are such tremendous endorphin rushes w- when you execute them properly. I, I remember one time shopping in the supermarket for the food for Thanksgiving. Um, it may have been Christmas, but I'm pretty sure it was Thanksgiving. And I, cause I remember I had a Turkey in the cart and I was buying, you know, whatever. And there was this, I noticed this woman, young woman pushing a cart. She had a little kid in, in the, in the shopping cart with her. And she's got a list and she's picking up things and looking at them and looking at the price and then putting them back, you know, and the kid is asking for something and she's saying, no, we can't get that. And, you know, I got him, I just got to get it, you know, the stuff we need for dinner. And then, you know, she picked up something else and looked at it and, you know, was calculating and you could see that she didn't thought I can't afford this and put this back. And, and, and I was every couple of aisles, you know, I came, ran into her and she was just still doing this. And she had like, you know, three things in her cart by, by, by this time. And I, and I just like went over to her and I said, lady, get whatever you want. Fill your card up with whatever you want for your dinner and I'll pay for it. And I, I had to convince her a little bit about it. You know, that wasn't strange. Or anything, but, but yeah. you know, I just, I just said, I, you're, you're killing me here. Why watching you put everything back? Just get what you need. Put, fill your card up, what, get your dinner, get everything. And I'll get in line. I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get in line in front of you and, and, and pay for it for you. And I did. And she, she did the whole thing. She was really conservative about it. She says, is it okay if I get this? Is it okay? I go, yes, whatever you want, fill it up. And, and the, the kid too, whatever he wants. And I, I did, it was, it was like, it wasn't even like a hundred bucks. It was, it was, it was ridiculous. It was, it was a small amount of money and it just felt really good. You know, that I, that I was, you know, what, what if I was in that situation or, or I had actually, I have been in that situation where I didn't have enough money to eat. And it, it's, it would be great if somebody swoop, came and swooped in and came down and, you know, bought me a basket full of groceries. I would have been eternally grateful. And, and th- this, this, this person was, and it was just a really nice, I, I felt good doing it. No, you, you helped somebody like a random act of kindness. You didn't want anything for it. You just wanted to help that person. Exactly. And, and that just made a big difference in that person's life. That, that, that you said like that cost wasn't even a hundred dollars, but to that person, they got to have a great dinner. They got to give what their kids wanted. And it was a great thing to do. 
And you do feel good when you do these type of things. Absolutely. You do. And that's a, that's a key thing here, guys. It's, it's all about feeling good. You know, <laughs> we, it's, that's, it, feeling good is a good thing. So, Definitely. right. So, uh, number 10 is my, which is one of my favorites. Don't fixate on the news, especially now during this pandemic. You're cooped up at home. It's really easy to get sucked into watching too much news, to get sucked into, um, you know, these mindless, impossible to win wars on Facebook and Instagram. You know, you, the social media is an absolute double edged sword when it comes to times like this. Just limit limit your exposure. The problem with the news is you can get you can have you can have one one thing. Let's say wearing the mask. You can get you can get a, a slew of experts on one side and say, "Oh, wearing a mask is stupid, useless. You can't you know you can't it doesn't it doesn't work. It's wet. You blow out of, of the 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 moisture in the mask breeds bacteria. You blow it out in the person's face. You're not really protecting them. And then the other camp says, "Oh no, if you sneeze, the droplets are going to go all over the place and you're going to you're going to infect them, even if you're asymptomatic. So you're going to have you're going to have one side of a co- has a cogent argument just as good as the other one. And and you're stuck in the middle. What one do you believe? I, I believe this one. Okay, so I'm going to argue with somebody else about that one. And the, the next thing you know, two, three hours of your day has been sucked down the drain in an absolute futil- act of futility. So I, I, I recommend highly limit your exposure to the news. Pick one news show a day and watch that one. Um, if it's whatever network you like, you know, do watch it on there and, and, and limit, limit your social media engagements to positive things, to talking about what you're going to do in business, what you're going to do when this pandemic is over, how you're going to st- remind, remember to enjoy life a little bit more and be more grateful to things that you have. That kind of stuff is great. It breed, breeds positive action and it breeds a good positive mental attitude. But dwelling on these pointless arguments to nowhere fostered by too much watching of the news is something you really should avoid. No, I, 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 I totally agree with you. Like when you watch the news, they seem to repeat the same thing, especially bad news over and over and over. And, and you watch this and, and it's like they, they fixate on just telling you bad things. You know, when you're listening, especially this time with, you know, going, what's going on with COVID-19 and, and this, this pandemic, it's just all bad. You know, and, and, and it's just something that it will bring you down and you're right. I listen to the news, you know, in the morning for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and that's my, that's it. You know, I don't want to (laughs) listen to news and, you know, I, I do, I do want to know what's going on. I want to know what's going on with current, you know, current events. Um, but if you're fixated because normally when you listen to the news, you can probably watch the news in 20 minutes and know what's going on for the whole day. And then at that that news is repeated through the whole day. And that, and that's and it, it, you're right. And that's the difference that's the difference between being informed and being brainwashed because yes. if if you focus on one side or the other they're out there to drum in the same message and actually what somebody did a collage of newscasters and you know they they it just showed how they say the same thing. They played it over they each one is playing over each other. They're all they're all saying the same thing. And, and that, that gets beaten into your brain until eventually you're going to believe it. Whether it's true or not, it doesn't really matter at that point. So the purpose of news is to make sure you are up on current events and have stayed informed. Anything beyond that, you're subjecting yourself to, to, <laughs> to brainwashing. So stay away from it. And, and, and a lot of the news is very opinionated, one-sided. Whether, right. you know, you watch, you know conservative, you know, TV or you watch, you know, liberal TV, they're very, very, very like one sided. So you only hear that one side and it's something I don't I, I, I definitely if the news should not be political and it's very political, yes, which it shouldn't be. Exactly. Um, and, and it's a shame that it's like that. And, you know, I, I don't want to get political on this show because we're not we're not saying our political <laughs> we're not going to say our political affiliation, but you know, you look at what Trump has brought about saying fake news and this is all true. It's just been a lot of stuff that's been said because they take a small talking point and they exaggerate that talking point. 
but there's so much more into that conversation that they don't want you to hear. Right. And that's something that happens. I'm, I'm going to say on both sides. I'm not going to yes. be on one side. So I'm not going to say one side. It's on both sides. No, it is. And, it's, on, it's absolutely on both sides. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's something that, you know, when you watch it, you have to be cognizant to the fact that this news is biased politically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah no, it is. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. <laughs> so as as we, you said, limit your news. <laughs> limit, yeah. limit, limit your you news. Want, and you'll stay positive. Right. The last but not least is something I truly believe in. You know, there's a book, and I think you've heard of it, called The Secret. Yes. The Secret is about visualization. Believing so much that something is going to happen, that it happens. And here's a good example of it. I, I moved to California on a goal of becoming a pro. That process, it took me over a year. I moved to California. I got, you know, we'll tell stories. I got to train with Lee Haney. My goal was focused, razor focused that I was going to become pro. Every day I woke up, my visualization was I'm going to get my body ready and that I'm going to win back then, win the nationals. And then if you win the nationals back then, you had to then win Mr. Universe or right. the world championships. It was to this now today you could turn, you know, you, they're giving out pro pro cards like, uh, like candy, like, like candy. You could get a pro card, <laughs> know. you know, winning, you know, coming in second and third place in the, in a junior national show or a junior USA show, which I, you know, it's a whole other point we could talk about, <laughs> but but the point of the matter is every day I visualized winning my pro card. That's all I thought about. So it came down to the last weeks of the show and, you know, my parents, I haven't seen my parents in one whole year, but they were going to come see me at the shows. So I said to my mother, I said to my father, I said to my brothers, I said, listen, there are two shows. There's the Nationals, that's in New Orleans, and there's the Miss Universe, that's in Las Vegas. I'm going to win the Nationals. I'm going to win the light heavyweights in the Nationals, and from the Nationals, I'm going to go to the Universe, which is in Las Vegas. So you need to make sure you buy your tickets for both shows, because I'm definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely winning both shows. Now, my brother said, how do you know you're not going to win? And I stopped him. I'm going to win. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. I'm winning those shows. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, so, you, and you and did. So, <laughs> and, I did, and I did. I won those shows. And I truly believed in the power of visualization because every day for 365 days, every day, I would visualize getting that pro card. I would visualize with my hand going up, with Joe Weider having my hand up. I thought, I'm going to get to meet Joe Weider. And I'm going to meet Joe Weider at the Mr. Universe because he's the one who's going to give me the, you know, the award and I'm going to turn pro. And mind you, that day that I won the universe, <laughs> Joe Weider brought my hand up in victory and I turned pro. But the point what I'm trying to bring up is that visualization is a very strong power. Yes. If you truly believe, you will put everything into that effort. And sometimes you don't win, uh, or sometimes you don't accomplish things, but when you really believe in something so much that you put every effort of your body, every inch of your effort to accomplish that, a lot of times you will succeed. You will win. You know, I, I, I'll tell you another story. I told my dad, you know, we were, I set up my company and I was working at the basement and, you know, I said, dad, I'm going to be a millionaire. And he's like, and my dad, my dad was a, you know, a middle-class, you know, Mason. And he never, you know, he never, well, he did get, he did see, see millions because he had properties and stuff later on. You know, he only got millions when he died. My poor guy, my uh, poor dad. But I, you know, I said to my dad, I said, man, I have a million in the bank. And my dad was always like trying to make me do like, you know, like things like fix this and fix that. And I said, dad, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to have someone working for me doing that. So I don't need to do that. <laughs> but, you know, I truly believe that I would be, you know, that I would, you know, what I would have a million dollars in my account. How would I do that? 
you know, I would start my own business. I would be able to do that business and sell and grow that business. And I believed it. And, and I did, you know, become a millionaire and people that don't have that power of positive thinking or that visualization or, you know, I, I heard Jim Carrey, he wrote a check. He had an empty account and he wrote in that check, he wrote $5 million. Eventually in that check, that checkbook, he had $5 million because he truly believed that he was going to have $5 million. And, you know, that, that was a great story about Jim Carrey because he used to carry that check around with him all the time. Exactly. And, and to remind him. And, and what was really touching was when his dad died, he, 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 at the funeral, he put the check in his dad's jacket pocket. <laughs> so so it, it worked for many successful people is the power of visualization. Yes. It, it's a very powerful tool. And if you use that tool and you just, but you have to do the work. Of now, course you can't but, just, but let me ask you, in, in, in such a, powerful visualization where you know you're going to win when you actually do win is that almost anticlimactic because there's there's no surprise in it well then we could go back to one of the other uh numbers in and enjoying the process ah, enjoying <laughs> the pro <laughs> so you got to go back to enjoying the process <laughs> back to enjoying the process gotcha so you know the whole, the, the whole process of doing it but i mean if you think positively and visualize every day that you're going to accomplish something. You will accomplish it. You will accomplish it. And I, I, I really believe that. And, and like I said, the mind is the most powerful tool. The mind can destroy you and the mind can build you to endless, you know, accomplishments. Absolutely. And, and the people that have that limited mindset they believe that the world is not fair, you know, all these different things that you hear from people um, that they just don't have that positive outlook and that visualization of reaching certain things. Now, when you visualize something, John, you have to do the work. You have to organize yourself. You have to plan all these things that take place to make that end result happen. But every day that you have that positive outlook of believing and visualizing that victory, you will do everything needed for that victory. For example, getting ready for a show, never cheated on my diet, made sure I posed twice a day, trained twice a day, you know, never missed a workout when I was like tired and I was on low carbs and all the things that I've done. It was funny. It was, you know, some of the, the when I was getting ready for the show is on, you know, I did that low carb and then you carb up. And I was with when I was with Lee Haney and Lee Haney. Remember that time we're driving the car and we went to that red light, wherever it was, it was in the valley in Tarzana. And then we went to that red light and just you just went right through the light, you know, because you were like, <laughs> you're on low carb. You know, Rich, what are you doing? You're gonna kill me. I'm trying to be Mr. Olympia. But you know, when I the point I'm getting to, I'm getting outside of the point, you know, that process of getting ready for that show and that low carbing and I enjoyed every moment of it. I enjoyed it all. I told you a story where when I was preparing for that show and, you know, my visualization, the victory went in that show and I went on a low carb, I almost went on zero carbs to carb deplete, which I found out later doesn't work for me very well, by the way. <laughs> right. But I went on this low <laughs> carb and one day I was coming, I was, I was going to the grocery store and I was told you I was on low carbs and I like, what can I eat that has like low carbs? And I found tomatoes. Now, mind you, I hated tomatoes <laughs> as a kid. I, I mean, I liked it in tomato sauce, but I could never eat raw tomatoes. I right. thought they were disgusting. I was so hungry, John. I, I just took a bite of that tomato like it was an apple. <laughs> and it tasted like it was like sugar. Wow. It tasted like the greatest <laughs> flavor in the world. I think a tomato has like 30 calories. Yeah, yeah very, very little low. carb. You're right. Very right. low. <clears throat> so I eat about I eat about six of them. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the juice dripping down your face, Drip like my a face. savage. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, eat this, I eat these tomatoes. <laughs> but but you know what? I joy I enjoyed the process, and I I had the visualization of winning, and I was I was so strict on my diet, and you know I said I'm going to eat tomatoes, even though I hated tomatoes, and you know, I actually enjoyed it. <laughs> now, now you like tomatoes. 
Now I love now I love raw tomatoes. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> Well, guys, those are 11 great tips for you to take with you and hopefully use and help to get, get through this particularly difficult time we're having. Rich, I thought this was a great idea you had uh, that we would come on and do this. And, and I really hope that people take these to heart and you know pay attention to them and employ at least one or two of them and get some benefit out of Definitely. this. Definitely. I would employ all 11 of them, but employ some of these you know tips for the brain you know, in positive thinking. And I think you'll really excel in anything you do completely the brain is the most powerful muscle in your body as my father used to say definitely yep. and 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 again everybody out there you know on itunes you know you love the show give us a five-star rating subscribe like comment you know we're really john and i are really enjoying this and we're gonna have some great shows moving forward with some great guests. We, we so, have we have three really, really big guests already locked up. So you guys pay attention. It's going to be really good. Cool. See you guys soon.